I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns, and in this video, I want to show you a brand new tool by Red Heart. It's the Pom Pom Tassel Maker. With this Pom Pom Tassel Maker, you can make multiple pom poms at the same time in various sizes, or you can make really great tassels, all using some very simple tools and the maker. In this video, we will learn how to make pom-poms and tassels, super quick and easy, all using the Palm and Tassel Maker. If you wanna find out where you can purchase your very own Palm and Tassel Maker, make sure you click on the link in the video description right below this video. Okay, let's jump in and let me show you how to use this really great tool. I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am to show you this palm and tassel maker. I am lucky enough that I was there from conception to full on production of this product. So let me go ahead and jump in and show you how this works. First off, your palm and tassel maker comes in a kit just like this. And it's fantastic because you can reuse this packaging. It simply opens up at the top and you just pop it open. You can save all of the instructions that are right here on the packaging and there is a folded up set of instructions inside as well that has English and French and Spanish all in the instructions. Now your pom-pom maker comes in three pieces. So go ahead and pull out those pieces and we're gonna fit them together sort of like a puzzle. When we connect these pieces together, we are determining the distance between the pegs in order for us to create our pom-poms or our tassel. Once you have the pieces out, you can go ahead and assemble. I'll show you what it looks like to assemble all three. Really simple, it's very much like a puzzle construction. Or if you don't wanna have all three, you can eliminate the middle one and just assemble the outside too. Once you have this assembled, you have two really great pegs, and these pegs have holes in the center that go all the way through, and that's very important when we're creating the tassels. You then place the pegs in the position you wish them to be in, either on the furthest out, or you can even take this in and have a little bit inset and the furthest one out. In this video, I will follow the instructions to make these little two inch pom-poms. These are super cute and really easy. After you have assembled the pieces together and put the pegs into the position you want, it's then time to cut four lengths of yarn in order to create our ties. Now, I am gonna make a suggestion. If the yarn you're using is not very strong and if it breaks really easily, you might wanna consider using cotton thread for your ties instead of the actual yarn you're using. It's just a great way to make sure that your palms are gonna to stick together. Following the instructions, they want us to place these ties in the second tie, in the sixth one, so one, two, three, four, five, six, in the tenth one, seven, eight, nine, ten, and in the fourteenth, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. You wanna make sure that your ties are as even as possible as far as the length. So make sure that they are extended out and about as even as you can get it. One great thing about this design is when you're placing the ties onto the maker, the ties are actually into these little grooves that are nice and snug with this worsted weight yarn. These ties will then be pulled up and wrapped around the yarn that we will be weaving around these two pegs. Let's go ahead and grab the yarn we plan on using to make our pom-pom. I will use a different color yarn to make the pom-pom so that way you can see how this works. And we wanna start out with the slip knot. To make a slip knot, you put the tail of your yarn in the palm of your hand, take your working yarn, wrap it around your forefinger and middle finger, and when you come back up, cross over. Now rotate your hand over, go underneath the front loop, grab the back loop and pull it off. You now have a slip knot. We wanna place that slip knot on one of the pegs. It doesn't matter which one. Place it on there and just give it a gentle pull. Go ahead and push that slip knot all the way down to the bottom. I'm gonna tilt this so you can see. I've pushed that slip knot all the way down to the bottom. Now, making sure that I don't accidentally grab any of these ties as I'm wrapping, I wanna take my yarn and I want to wrap it around my pegs, starting from the bottom and working my way up the pegs. 
doing it as even and consistent as possible. As I get going, I can take a minute and just shove down my little wraps here. See, I shove them down and then continue on. Obviously, the more wraps you do around the pegs, the bigger your pom-poms going to be. You can make that decision based on how large you want your pom-poms to be. As you find that you have wrapped all the way to the top of your pegs, you can go ahead and start working down towards the bottom of the peg again, just overlapping the yarn on the yarn you've already wrapped around the pegs, trying to keep it as consistent as possible working down the pegs. Once again, the more yarn you wrap, the fuller the pom-poms are going to be. When you get to the bottom, you can work your way back up or you can stop at the bottom, whatever you choose. When you feel like your two pegs have been wrapped as much as you want them to be, you wanna go ahead and we're going to cut our yarn right here. And what I did was I cut my yarn and then I created another slip knot. So let's create another slip knot here between and create a slip knot. And then I applied that slip knot to one of the pegs. I put it over here on this side. The reason I did that is because then I could just give that yarn a nice tug. Look, it's in place. Everything's good. Pretty cool, right? So this is what my little pom-pom maker looks like at this point. If I extend out my ties again, because this is where they come into play. Now these ties are already in place and ready for me to pull up and tie together the uh, length of yarn that I have wrapped around those pegs. So all I need to do is take either end of one tie, bring it up, and then tie a knot. So I'm gonna give that a nice tug. Now this is why you wanna make sure this yarn is nice and secure. I'm gonna turn this on its side so you can see here. I've given this a nice pull, but here's a suggestion that I like to do to make sure these are nice and tight. I take this yarn and I'm just gonna push it through underneath and put it to that side. I'm gonna take the other one and I'm gonna push it through underneath and pull it to this side. And then I'm gonna tie it again. You see what I did? I just wrapped the yarn around the base so that way I can bring it back up to the top again. And this time when I give it a good pull, I even get that more snug. See how snug that is? I feel like the more snug you can get the center of your pom-pom, the better chance you have of making sure that the pom-pom doesn't fall apart on you. Once you give that a tie, then you can go ahead and knot it. All right, so let's go ahead and knot that. And that is one tie, okay, you see that? So now I wanna do that with the rest of the ties. sure as you're tying these that they are staying as close into position as possible as the groove that you initially had the tie resting in. I'm going to give this last one a nice tug here. Okay so now everything's tied and what are those ties for? 
Those ties represent the center of our palms, and the purple is actually the palm. So the name of the game now is to use your nice pair of scissors to make sure that you can cut between these ties as close to center as possible, so that way each side of the tie is as even as possible for your palm. The first thing you wanna do is go ahead and take your peg out. You can see it relaxes, it's not gonna go anywhere, everything's tied up, and we can move our maker out of the way. So now we have all of these nice little ties, and I've used the blue so that way you can better see the ties in the video, but you can use the same color yarn, just make sure it's nice and strong. So as I mentioned, you wanna make sure that you're using a nice pair of scissors and cutting as close to evenly, or as close to the middle as possible, in between each of these ties. You can use a tape measure if you want to and measure between each one of the ties and then be like, all right, so this is right there is center. I mean, the side there, so right center would be right there. Or you can just eyeball it. You don't have to be that precise. You can just eyeball it. And I have found that if I take little chunks at a time and cut, it worked out much better than if I tried to just do one big chop like this, one big chop. If I take little sections at a time, I get a much more consistent palm. Now I wanna make sure I am not cutting my tie. I do not wanna cut my blue yarn in this example. I just wanna cut the purple. And I'm just cutting in between. Pretty simple. We're gonna get multiple pom-poms here. Ta-da! So now, there's one half of the pom-pom. On this half, I just have to go ahead and as evenly as possible, just snip down this row. If you find one that's not snipped, you can go back and snip it. Once it's all snipped, that's where my initial slip knot was, you can grasp the tail, the tie, and give it a good shake Okay, and this is where you would now begin to shape the actual palm. So what I'm gonna do is rather than doing this over a waste paper basket, I'm bringing in a yarn bowl, so just to make it prettier for you to see. But this is where you literally just kind of have to eyeball it and just shape the curve of your pom-pom. Some of your palms will be easier to shape than others. It all depends on the um, distance between the ties and how far apart you cut them. So some might be right on, you don't have to do a whole lot of shaping. Others might be really off and you have to do a ton of shaping. And you can keep it as scraggly or as you know poodle-like as you want it to be. You don't have to have any particular size or shape of palm, it's totally up to you. Once it's all shaped the way you want it to be, give it a good shake again, and you have a really great little palm. Now, I wanna show you an example of what it looks like if you accidentally cut too close to the ties because it is um, kind of comical. <laughs> if you can see here, the tie is at the same color, but it is right here. And so look how close I cut that. And this is an example of when I cut it just like I did one straight cut. And you see how it's just really close and lo just looks really shaved. So I really prefer making sure that you take the little bits at a time as you cut. You get a much nicer, more natural looking round curve to the palm. Now let's go ahead and cut another one just so you can see what it's like. So we did the outside one. So now we have, this is the portion that we have left after cutting the last one. So from here to here, we wanna make it as even as possible. So if I'm gonna just pick that point, I'm eyeballing this one, baby. I am going in and just doing it. I am confident. I really like using this tool. It's been a lot of fun, and it's great because pom-poms are so hot right now. And being able to make um, a multiple of pom-poms instead of just one at a time has been really handy um, recently for all the different pom-pom stuff I've had to do. So here I am, I'm just snipping through all of this bit 
and just a little bit more and it's free. Here's the rest of mine. I can set it down and just deal with that later. And all I can do here is give that a good shake. And here's a good example of one of the palms looking pretty decent here at the start. You see how that looks pretty decent here at the start? I don't have to do a whole lot of shaping this one. Now my blue does show a little bit, but if you're using the same color, or you know what, look, once I fluff that out, it doesn't show hardly at all. I don't have to do a whole lot of shaping on this one at all. So this is a really good example about how if you take your time and really make sure that the distance between the cuts is nice and even, you don't have to do a whole lot of shaping. There we go, look at that. That's, that's practically perfect right there. That there, that's a great looking pom-pom right there. So all you would do is you carry on and you would finish off these two in the exact same manner. We just did these. Now you know how to make a great pom-pom. What about a tassel though? Let me show you that now. Okay, so we made some great pom-poms. How about a tassel? Let's go ahead and learn how to make those. I love making tassels. They're really great accessories. We're gonna start off with the same two pieces we used last time. And what we wanna do is take our two pegs and place them into position. Now we need to go ahead and get our ties in place. This time, we only wanna place two of our actual ties into position on the maker. We'll put one in the first position and then we'll put one in number 15. These other two ties that we cut, we're gonna set aside because they're gonna be used at the top of the tassel. Now that we have our ties in place and our pegs in place, it's time to wrap the yarn around the two pegs. So go ahead and grab the yarn you plan on making your tassel with, place the tail of a yarn in the palm of your hand, working yarn around your forefinger and middle finger, and when you come back up, cross over. Rotate your hand over, Go underneath the front loop, grab the back loop, and off. You've just created a slip knot. Place that slip knot onto one of the pegs and just pull the two legs apart and you've tightened up your slip knot. You want to make sure you push that slip knot down to the bottom of the peg and just like we did when we did the pom poms, we want to wrap the yarn around the two pegs. Be careful not to accidentally wrap your ties into position as well. You just wanna wrap your yarn as consistently and evenly as possible around the pegs. Starting from the bottom, working towards the top. Squish them down as you go along, just to get yourself a little bit of extra space to work and keep on wrapping. The more wraps you do, the fuller your tassel's gonna be. As you get to the top of your pegs and you're running out of room, you can go ahead and wrap the pegs going back on top of the yarn you've already wrapped and work your way down towards the bottom of the pegs should you so choose to make your tassel a little bit fuller. Completely up to you. When you've wrapped your yarn around your tassels as much as you want, go ahead and snip your yarn and attach it to the peg. Once again, I'll snip my yarn. I'm going to create a slip knot here and attach it to the other peg. There we go. I have my two pegs completely wrapped with yarn. Now that my pegs are wrapped, I need to tie them off at the top. And this will be this neck portion right up here at the top of the tassel. On the example, I actually wrapped around several times. This one, I'm just gonna tie as I did before. I pull the yarn up, give it a good pull, and then I like to take the two sides and put them underneath you see this, I'm putting them underneath and just switching their sides and give it a good pull again. It just makes it nice and snug there at the top and it makes it so that the actual tassel doesn't fall apart. Once it's as snug as you want it to be, go ahead and knot that portion off. Then you can do the same thing on the opposite end. Pull the tie up, make sure it's in the right position wants to move a little bit. Once you give it a good pull, I like to bring the yarn to the opposite sides. Again, I wanna remind you, wanna make sure that you're using a yarn that's nice and strong, because as you're pulling this yarn really tight, it has a tendency to break if you're using a yarn that doesn't have a very strong um, fiber that you're using. And give it a good pull. 
Now, remember these two ties that I mentioned we would be using later? Now's the time. Go ahead and take one tie and thread it onto a tapestry needle. Once you've threaded it onto that tapestry needle, drop it down the center hole of the peg. Once it drops down, go ahead and remove your, your, your needle from it and just leave that tie there. Grab your other tie, thread it onto your tapestry needle. Let's see if I can show you how to do this. Drop that needle down the center of the peg once again. <laughs> of course, this one's gonna give me trouble, right? There we go, down the center of the peg. Hold on to one end, take your needle out of the other end, and then set it aside. That's the only time you're gonna need your needle right now. Now that those are complete, let's go ahead and remove our pegs. Now, with our peg, this tie that we put through the center of our peg is actually going to tie the top of our tassel. So you wanna make sure you're holding one end. Okay, I'm gonna hold this end down here. And as I do that, I can pull this peg out. You see that? So now that peg is removed and I have the yarn already thread through that little loop up there. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and I can tie that portion up there all nice and tight. Again, you can use the same color yarn, you can use different color yarn, it's however creative you want it to be. There we go. That there, that was my slip knot, so I'm going to just tighten that up. There we go. And so there's that side. Let's go ahead and do this side as well. I'm gonna hold this end of my tie. Go ahead and remove my peg. And so I have my tie remaining right there. And all I do when I tie that up, just cinches that up right there at the top of my tassel. You see that? All right, so I have the tassel all tied and now I have a decision to make. Do I wanna make my tassel right down the center and have two tassels about the same size? Do I wanna cut one shorter and have one longer? I have options here. I don't have to make two the exact same size. I can have a variety. So you go ahead and do what works for you. Again, you could bring in your tape measure and measure between the two bits here to make sure you get completely centered. So that's about six inches total. So completely centered would be about right there. So I'm just gonna mark it with my finger. <laughs> and then go ahead, bring in your scissors and begin to cut. Do you think that's center? I think that's good. Let's do this. Boom and just as even as possible. And remember, with the tassels, it's kind of cool. You don't have to do a whole lot of shaping because they could be either completely straight or a little scraggly. It's totally up to you. That's half of the fun of making pom-poms and tassels is you get to decide how rigid you need them to be. So here we go. Look at that. We have some great little tassels. How easy is that? And I've made two, so simple. To finish this off, I could go ahead and I could take the yarn I used as the tie around the throat and I could just wrap it around a couple times to give it a nice tight uh, binding right there, I guess. And then if I wanted to, all you need to do is thread these tails. You could do one at a time or two at a time, whatever works. Thread it onto the tapestry needle that you already have I can, let me do this without splitting the yarn. Let's make it as clean as possible. Tuck it down this tie that we've just created, right down the center, and give it a good pull. If you've done it with both of them, you don't have to go back and do the second one, but if you only did it with one like I did, do your second one. Come in, go right down the center, give it a good pull. Those could be hidden inside the tassels. You could snip them up real nice and close. You could do whatever you want. 
But look at that, you have this really great tassel. How awesome is that? And so simple, all using this really great palm and tassel maker tool by Red Heart. Hopefully you uh, will wanna run out and get one on your own. They are so simple and the multitasking part of this makes it great for the time crunch crafter uh, that you might be, <laughs> I know that I am. And there you have it. Now you know how to use this really great tool to make awesome pom-poms and tassels. Hopefully you will have as much fun with your palm and tassel maker as I've had with mine. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Everything you need to know about knitting or crochet can be found right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Learn with Marley Bird. Visit youtube.com forward slash Marley Bird.